So we've just seen that other people can lead us to do some bad stuff, right? We're naturally copying other people's behaviors, naturally copying their emotions, and even copying, in some cases, their immoral actions. But the good news is that since we're so susceptible to other people as a situation, we can also harness them to achieve our happiness goals. But the question is, how do we do that? How can we use the social conformity for good instead of bad? Thankfully, we have our psych pro tips. Yay! And the first psych pro tip is that we can harness other people to be good social benchmarks and to show us some social proof. What do I mean by these things? Well, we'll first define social benchmarks as this psychological phenomenon in which other people's behavior gives you a standard by which to assess your own behavior. Before we talked about social comparison and reference points, normally those are bad, but sometimes you can use social benchmarks for good. If you pick the right reference point, then copying that person's behavior might be really helpful. And there's lots of evidence that using these social benchmarks can be quite powerful. One of my favorite examples comes from the Princeton psychologist, Betsy Pollack. She actually did her degree back at Yale here. And she was really interested in how we can change around a different kind of behavior. Maybe not that's one that's relevant as much for personal happiness, but one that she was really interested in, bullying. She wanted to figure out whether she could use the right social benchmarks to stop bullying. And she was really interested in studying high school and middle school social networks, right? Like who's the node in this big social network that if they were the right reference point, could get other kids to stop bullying? And so she did this deep, lovely dive on like, who are the individuals who would be most helpful for kind of nipping bullying in the bud in these middle schools? And so what she found was that she studied this different school social network. She went to each school, studied the social network, and she figured out the kids in the middle of the social network who the right nodes. They weren't necessarily the people with the most friends, but they were the ones with the most connections. They were the students who were gonna be seen the most. And she worked with those kids and convinced them, you know, hey, bullying kind of sucks. Like, would you be willing to take a sort of public stand against bullying? Maybe like, you know, come up with your own creative design or wear some bracelet or something, but like basically be very public about the fact that you don't like bullying. So students agreed to do this. And what she found was that across the whole school year, this intervention reduced bullying in these individual schools by 30%. Right? Just having the right benchmark be like, hey, I don't think this behavior is cool, can make the people around you naturally follow it, which is pretty cool. That's social benchmarking, but there's also the power of social proof that we can use to change our behavior. It's kind of like social benchmarking, but social proof is a phenomenon in which you assume the actions that other people are doing reflect what you're supposed to do. So it's not just a reference point about like, oh, the normal student in my school is doing this. It's like, this is proof that this is the thing I'm supposed to be doing in any correct, in any situation, right? The kind of correct behavior. And there's lots of evidence that social proof is really powerful, even when it's quite automatic. Um, we're using these kinds of things more automatically than we realize. One of my favorite examples of this um, was from a study by the Nudge Group. So there's a lot of governmental groups that are trying to nudge people's behavior positively. And this one group was really worried about littering. And so they did a subtle nudge where they tried to see whether these social proof signals could reduce littering. And so what they did was they did some survey where they gave out caramel candies with a wrapper. So a bunch of people got these candies, but of course they have this wrapper that people might be tempted to just like fling on the ground. Could a really subtle social signal change people's behavior? And so what they did to add this subtle social signal was that they painted footprints on the ground as though some person was there towards the garbage can. So no one told people to do this. There wasn't even an actual agent, but there was this subtle social proof. Oh, you're supposed to take stuff to the garbage can. And what did they find? They saw a 46% reduction in the number of wrappers that were thrown on the street, right? Just like this subtle social signal gets people to behave correctly. That's littering, but there's also, you can see the power of social proof in things that really matter, like voting. You know, if we're gonna fix the problems of the United States today, we need to make sure that you're vote, you and especially young people are all voting for the causes that they care about. But there's a problem in that young people don't often vote as much. So what can we do to deal with this? Maybe we can use the power of social proof. And that's just what Bond et al. did. They teamed up with researchers on Facebook and they got an intervention that targeted 61 million people back in the 2010 election. And people either saw an information condition that was like, hey, you know, there's like a pop up in your Facebook feed, like, hey, voting, you know, today's election day, make sure you vote. Or one that was social. They had a pop up that said, hey, today's election day, but it was pictures of your friends who also voted. So these are the images that actually look like. This is the information one, you know, hey, voting's happening. Here's the social one. It's like, hey, is voting, and here are all your friends that actually voted too. What do they find? Well, they get twice as many people who then report that they voted on Facebook spontaneously with the social proof. 
So you kind of get this sense of like, oh, other people are voting. That must be the thing I'm supposed to do today. And it can really affect big things like elections. I mean, twice the number of people voting with 61 million people, that is a lot of people. These are some psych pro tips that we can engage in outside finding the right benchmarks and finding the right social proof. But we can also do something ourselves to kind of put ourselves on the social line. And this is the power of behaving better through public pledging. What do I mean pledging? It's kind of like, you know, pledge allegiance to the flag, but it's really like, you solemnly swear that you're going to do something and you say it publicly. So your social reputation is kind of on the line if you don't do it. And there's lots of evidence that just the simple act of doing this can change around our behavior and maybe even make our behavior a little bit more moral. One study uh, by Meeker and colleagues looked at this in doctors. Um, there's this problem in doctors where doctors have a temptation to give out more antibiotics than they're supposed to. People ask for them. Doctors sometimes get like kickbacks and stuff. Like there's this temptation to do it more than they're supposed to. But doctors know it's kind of not the moral thing to do. So could we use the power of a public pledge to get doctors not to do this? And so the public pledge was that doctors were asked to put up a poster in their office where they sign it and they say, you know, I'm going to be really careful and not overprescribe these uh, antibiotics versus a control condition where there's no poster. Doctors are just reminded about what they're supposed to do with standard practice. What do these researchers find? Well, if you look at the change in the percentage of antibiotics uh, that doctors are doing, the control actually boosted the number of doctors' prescriptions, right? It's kind of like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to do it. But then if there's no public pledging, then they actually do it even more. But in the public pledge condition, now all of a sudden, people are, these doctors are doing it less. So the act of public pledging means you stick to behaviors that you want to stick to because like, your social status is kind of on the line. These are all ways that we can use the social situation to promote our happiness goals. Yes, our social situation sometimes brings us down, but it's a powerful mechanism to do the right thing for ourselves. Mm -hmm.